welcome to this proof by induction video, which is going to be focusing on the induction step, looking at proving that if Pn is true, that implies that Pn plus one is true. And we're going to look at an overview. For the induction step, we all start by assuming our statement Pn is true. So we need to write our statement down. This is often the form left-hand side expression, which has n's in it, is equal to the right-hand side an expression also with an n in it. The equality can be replaced by an inequality and sometimes by some other kind of relationship, e.g. divisibility. So the method I'm going to show you is my preferred method. It is, isn't the only way of doing this, but it is a way that will always work. So what do we do? We write down the left-hand side of our expression, but replacing the n's with n plus 1. So we have the left-hand side of n plus 1. So our first task is to find a relationship that relates the left-hand side with n plus 1 in it to the left-hand side with n. Once we have that, we can use our induction hypothesis and we can replace the left-hand side with n by the right-hand side with n in. What we need to do then is to do some more ordinary arithmetic to rearrange what we have here because we have the same relationship now between the left hand side with n plus 1 and the right hand side with n and we're aiming to get to the right hand side with n plus 1. Many people struggle with proof by induction and it's often not the process that I've described here but the bits of order and arithmetic. Remember, here, to find this relationship, you're using your ordinary relationships, ordinary mathematics. It could be differentiation or algebra. And again, here, you are using ordinary maths. There might be a relationship in here that you've not met before. But one of the good things about proof by induction is we always know where we're going we've always got a destination. So let's have a little look at how we might use our ordinary mass to get this first relationship. So I'm looking now at relating the left-hand side with n plus one in it to the left-hand side with n. I'm looking at three examples. There are many different ways of doing this because induction is used in many different areas of maths. We're going to start with probably the easiest relationship. This is when our left-hand side is a summation. The relationship is then easy. We simply take our left-hand side with n and we add the extra term we get when we add the n plus one in. We can now do the ordinary arithmetic on here. Probably one of the hardest is where we had div have a division. So we have something like 8 to the n plus 1 minus 3 to the n plus 1 and we're trying to relate this to 8 to the n and 3 to the n. There's nothing you can add. There's nothing you can really see to do. But the only thing you can do is multiply. You use the relationship you know. We know that 8 to the n plus 1 is 8 lots of 8 to the n. But we need the whole of the left hand side. So we take 8 times everything. This is, gives us the 8 to the n plus, n plus 1. We've got a term we didn't want, so we take it out again. And to keep our equality, we take away our 3 to the n plus 1. If you follow that through, you will find the answer now drops out. You use it in other areas of maths. You might have a differential relationship. So you've got to relate the differential of x to the n plus 1 to the differential of x to the n. So you use what you know about differentiation. You rewrite this as x times x to the n. And then we use the product rule. x times the differential of x to the n plus the differential of x times x to the n. And again, once you use this, you will find that the result drops out. I'm going to finish by looking at how to use 
where we are going, how to use the destination. This example is using one of the summation. So the left-hand side relationship was easy. We have a summation, we got a, a relationship on the right-hand side. So we simply do what we've just shown. We have our left-hand side with N plus an extra term. We can then replace the left-hand side with the right-hand side. So here we have the right-hand side from the N with our extra term. And we've got to decide what to do. So we can actually look at where we're going. We're heading for n plus 1 plus 1 r plus 1, which is n plus 2 r plus 1. We relate the binomials. It's not very easy, so we need to expand them into their factorials. So here's the factorials for the two terms here. And here's the factorial for this final term. You could look at these expressions here and think, what on earth do I do next? But if you look at the destination, you know what you need on the bottom. So the next stage, we know that we need to have n plus 1 minus r factorial, r plus 1 factorial on the bottom of our fraction. We can't sort the top out at the moment, but we can look at what we already have, and both our expressions at the moment have n plus 1 factorial on the top. So we simply need to work out what we multiply this fraction by to keep our equality here. If you compare this fraction with this one, you'll discover we've got an extra term on the bottom, so we need to multiply by that term on the top. Likewise, compare this term with the expression here, and you'll find we've got an extra r plus 1 on the bottom, so we need that on the top. And we have used our destination to write this expression, and if you look at what we've got in here, you'll find that we get n plus 2. Multiply n plus 1 by n plus 2, and we have our equal sign. There's no more work to be done. By using the destination, we were efficient in the middle here. We didn't have to do a lot of algebra and we quickly got to our final answer. Whenever you're doing proof by induction, whatever area of mathematics you're in, you can always do the same structure. Find the left-hand side with n plus one, find the relationship to the left-hand side with n. Use your induction hypothesis to replace that with the right-hand side with n, and then do some more ordinary mathematics. Use your skills in mathematics to get to the relationship with the right-hand side with n plus 1. Always remembering you know where you're going, so you know which kind of maths to use, which relationships to do. Then you can enjoy your proofs by induction.